Hi, my name is Dan with ENS Security, and today I'm going to show you how to set up the Diamond Series license plate recognition camera. Before we get into the installation practices for the license plate camera, I just want to go over some of the applications this camera can be used for. Pretty much anywhere that license plate detection or recognition is needed. Areas such as schools and universities, banks and financial institutions, retail, commercial, and hospitals, and anywhere else you can think of that requires it, okay? Before we begin with the installation part, I want to uh, go over some of the common questions that installers usually ask when installing this type of system. The first question usually is, what system or what recorders can the license plate recognition be compatible with, okay? Definitely the NVR5 series will be the first choice. You can also use it with the NVR7 series and even any of the Dash I series, which is the AI NVRs, okay? So let's go over some of the common questions. The first question usually is, how fast does the car need to be moving in order for the camera to pick it up? Usually between about 25 to 49 miles per hour, okay? Next question is usually, how high should the camera ideally be mounted at? Specs recommend usually between 1.2 meters to about 6 meters. So that's about 6 feet to about 20 feet, okay? And then uh, again, what's the distance that the camera can capture plates at? Like in other words, how far can it uh, detect? Usually about 20 feet to 98 feet is the ideal range, okay? So when you guys are setting this up for the first time, try to have a vehicle parked in the area where you plan intend to capture the plate and then just kind of do a test run while you're doing the configuration. So that way when the cars do come, you have a higher chance of success in terms of capturing plates, okay? Now, when you have the camera mounted uh, at a height, a certain height, looking down, try to keep the angle of the camera angled about 30 degrees, okay? And when the camera is on the side of a building looking, let's say, at a street, try to keep that angle of variance within 30 degrees as well too, okay? And one thing I also want to mention is when the installers are setting this up for the first time, it's most of the time during daytime when they're working, uh, very rarely will they have this uh, set up at nighttime, but just keep in mind that you may have the settings set correctly, picking up plates fine during the daytime, but at nighttime you may find out that you're not getting uh, good plate captures. So try to see if you can configure your uh, settings, you know, different settings such as, you know, brightness level, shutter speed uh, at different times of the day. That way it will ensure you have good plate capture throughout the whole entire day, okay? And before we begin to do the configurations of the license plate camera, I just want to mention that obviously there's a couple ways you can actually connect the camera to the recorder. One is through the internal built-in PoE on the back of the NVR through plug and play, and the other method is actually through an external PoE switch. My preferred method is actually to do it through an external switch because then you have an easier access to the web interface of the camera itself, okay? So once uh, you have that decided, you're gonna go ahead and log into the web interface of the camera by typing in the IP address and putting in the password that you created. Okay, and then one of the first things that you wanna do is you're gonna make sure that the ANPR receive checkbox is checked and enabled, okay? One of the ways that you can actually configure the detection region of the license plate is by clicking on the guide here. It's kind of a step-by-step -step logical guide to help you through it. You're going to go ahead and click on OK after you verify the camera has the latest firmware. Then you're going to notice here that there's going to be a detection region, two green fixed lines and a yellow red rectangle where the license plate should be. So what you're going to do is you're going to zoom in and zoom out to where the, the green detection region falls into the road area where the vehicles are going to be coming into. Okay, And then you're just going to have to best estimate uh, where the cars are going to be coming in. So you may have to have a second person out where the camera is to adjust the angle height in case these green lines don't fall into the area that you want, okay? Once you configure that, you're gonna go next and then have a detection region drawn. You have a red identification area where the vehicles are gonna come through and a green snap line area, okay? So once you have that configured, you're just gonna go next and then save the settings, okay? Now the other option is if you click on the configuration yellow box on the upper right hand corner, you'll see the same detection regions that you drawn earlier. You can also modify the regions uh, here as well too, okay? So you have one or the other way of doing it, okay? 
As long as the green snapshot line is above the yellow rectangle, then you should be okay. But ideally, you want it to be placed right above the, uh, the green snapshot line. So if I want to redraw that, I'm just going to go ahead and redraw and then draw the rectangle, I mean, sorry, the green line right over the top of the yellow rectangle. Hit confirm, okay? And then you're done there. Other settings that you want to also adjust and verify is by clicking on the settings tab. And then under the snapshot settings here, you're going to notice that there's a capture direction, okay? Capture direction uh, is going to be the position or the direction where the vehicles are headed. If they're coming towards the camera, then you want to select approaching. If they're going away from the camera, you want to select the opposite, okay? And sometimes you may have a lane where uh, the cars are going in both directions. So if that's the case, then what you can do is select two-way, okay? And then also algorithm type is another factor. So for example, earlier I mentioned that the detection distance is about 20 to 98 feet. So the shorter the distance, you can select middle distance, and the uh, longer the distance, you can select long distance, okay? So you just adjust it accordingly. Under the uh, intelligence, the scene, uh, depending on the height and the, uh, how you have it mounted, you can select different options here, okay? And also on the cutout menu here, make sure that's enabled, and you can notice that you have a plate and a whole vehicle checkbox. So I preferably like to have both of them enabled because on the live, view of the NVR when it does a snapshot, it includes not just a plate capture, but also the vehicle, uh, the whole vehicle. That way you have more details in case you need to get more information. Okay, so I like to have them both checked. Once you confirm that, that's pretty much the configuration on the camera side. Okay. And now I'm gonna show you how to set up the system on the NVR side. Now keep in mind that the interface uh, on the NVR side locally or through the web browser, they pretty much almost look identical, but there are a few settings that are uh, available only on the NVR itself as opposed to on the web interface, which is why I'm doing it through the local interface, okay? So the first thing you wanna do is you're gonna go into the AI mode, okay? And under the AI mode menu, you're gonna go into parameters, and then you're gonna to go to ANPR, okay? Now keep in mind, this part of the menu is gonna be the same on the, uh, the web interface itself if you were to log in that way. Now, uh, you're gonna select the channel that the ANPR camera is on, so in this example, it's D1 or the first channel, okay? And I just wanna mention that in other older firmware versions uh, or even in manuals, you may see an enable checkbox. Now, the newer ones don't have that option anymore, but if you do encounter one that does have an enable checkbox, just go ahead and enable that, and then you should be fine, okay? Now here you're gonna see there's three settings here. One's for general, which includes all vehicles. One's for a block list for vehicles that you put, that you restrict, and then another's for an allow list, or we call it a VIP list for important people, okay? Uh, so depending on which method that you wanna do, for the first one, I usually select the general. The schedule, make sure that's you know set for 24 seven or whatever schedule that you want that to be on. Click okay. And then under the record channel, make sure that's also enabled as well too. And then make sure, of course, by default, it should be on that particular channel, okay? And then as you can see here, whether it's under general, block list, or allow list, they're pretty much the same uh, settings there. And you can trigger them to do different things, like a buzzer, a tour, PTZ linkage if you have a PTZ camera, do email notifications, and so forth, okay? So once you have that set up, uh, the next thing you wanna do is go into the storage, okay? And then under schedule, for that particular camera, uh, you can also set it to uh, you know general 24/7 recording. That way, you don't miss anything. But another thing that I like to mention is that you also want to set it to intelligent uh, for the ANPR part, and then just copy to all. So you have a uh, both a 24/7 non-stop recording schedule and also intelligent function schedule for that as well too. Okay, and then you're just going to copy to all the days that you want for that particular channel, apply, and then so forth. Okay. And then later on, uh, when you do capture a plate, then what you can do is also go back to the AI menu here, and then under the AI search, you're gonna go into the, the motor vehicle option, and then you can uh, select the correct camera, the date and time, and then hit search, and if any license plates were picked up, it will show here, okay? And then later on, if you want to put the license plate in a database, you can select database, and then under like a vehicle block list, you can manually put in the vehicle plate that you want to be under uh, either the allow list or the block list, okay? And that's how you do it here. 
Now, one of the things I want to mention is that in the NVR local interface itself, this particular setting I'm going to show you here is not available on the, uh, the NVR web interface, okay? So when you go into the uh, drop down on the right hand side of the menu, you're going to go into live mode. You can either have a general mode, which is your normal mode, or you can do AI mode, which is what you want, okay? You're going to see a right hand column appear here and you're going to see a couple of icons. Now what we want to do is see the license plate snapshots along with the metadata that we want to show. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the gear icon here and you see where there's a couple of options here. We're going to select motor vehicle, make sure that's enabled, and then we're going to select up to four attributes that we want displayed. Okay, so plate number is obviously the most important one. Other options such as type, uh, color, and logo or whatever that you want displayed. And then once you click OK, then as soon as a vehicle is uh, coming through the detection area, then it should show up on the right hand side column here as you can see a list of plate numbers already being captured, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna demo this with a company vehicle to see if we can capture the plate and then we're gonna show you how we can pick it up or uh, search for it in the database. And now we're gonna demonstrate the Diamond Series license plate camera in action. Now, as you can see, it caught some snapshots on the right-hand side here. So I'm gonna click on one of the clips. And as you can see here, the license plate in the image and video matches what's on the met metadata right here on the right-hand side, 7GFX814. And you can also click the play button here to watch the clip. And as you can see, the van is going through the, uh, the camera's field of view. Another way you can actually search for the snapshots is by going to the main menu, go to AI, and then under AI search here, you're going to go towards this motor vehicle, and then of course select the camera of your choice in the start and the end time, and then hit search. And then as you can see here, there's a bunch of snapshots that the camera picked up earlier. So as you can see here, the latest one was the van. So if I click on it, it appears on the right hand side here, showing the metadata. And then I can also click the play button to show the same clip, okay? Now, uh, earlier in the configuration videos, um, there was also a uh, mentioning of you can put these license plates in a blacklist or whitelist. So if you go to the AI menu here, go to database, and you can notice here under the vehicle block list, there's options for an allow list or a block list, which you can manually input the license plate, okay? So under the parameters here, under the a and PR, you'll notice that there's a block list and allow list and there's different options that you can trigger when that license plate is recognized again. And that's how you do it. And that concludes our tutorial on how to set up the Diamond Series license plate recognition camera. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel to get notified for future videos. Once again, thanks for watching.